Hi, I'm Matt Carroll with the Senate Pacific Media and also the Future of News Initiative. And uh, I'm very excited to be here. And um, when they asked me to give a talk, I wanted to make it sort of a buzz feedable kind of thing. So I said, OK, five minutes, five top media leaders, five hot new news trends. I figured that would be pretty easy. I'll call 10 top uh, media leaders. I'll get five, and I'm good to go. So of course, I called 10, and 10 called me back. Totally screwed up my headline. Um, and I'm sure there is a lesson to be learned there about writing your headline first and then your story. But uh, I have no idea what that lesson is, so I'm going to totally ignore it and just move on with my talk. So here are the 10, nine um, people. Uh, by the way, the C is circa. Nine I'm sure you've heard of. One you probably haven't heard of, and it's Fresco down in the lower right. And it really doesn't belong up here in a lot of ways. Its content is very, very thin. But what is cool about it is that it is a very well-designed picture news app. And what's even cooler is that it was designed by two 19-year-old freshmen at NYU. And I was very impressed by that. And I thought to myself, OK, it's so neat that the, that the tools that exist today are really good, that can allow 19-year-olds to create a very creditable news site. And that's really cool. But it also made me think, OK, if 19-year-olds are doing this, what is the mobile news world going to look like? in another couple of years when the seasoned professionals get, get through tearing it apart and putting it back together. And by the way, I just love these, these kids' attitudes. It was Vangel, Daniel Vandermeer, I'm sure I'm killing his last name, and a guy named uh, John Meyer. So I talked to these 10 people. The, the two terms I kept hearing again and again was tipping point. Um, mobile is just. Everywhere now, it has gone from basically nothing not so long ago to now where it's 50% at the Post, the Times, BuzzFeed, The Guardian. Uh, Twitter is at 80%. And of course, that doesn't even count places like Circa, which are basically just, they're, they're designed just for mobile. Um, that is Adam Mann up there, in case you don't recognize him. The, uh, one of the things that was also clear was the, uh, the continuing atomization of news. This goes to sites like Circa, where they break everything into little bite-sized paragraphs as you move along. But it also includes sites like NYT Now or Yahoo News Digest, where they're taking a, a big bucket of news and putting it into a little tiny bucket, or a relatively small bucket, for people in the idea that it's much easier for, for people to consume over mobile. This is sort of further down the line. Uh, people like uh, Marty Barron talked about this and David Cohn at Circa, um, wearables. And it's clearly not here yet. It's definitely on the horizon. But the way they talk about it, uh, mobile was on the horizon not so long ago. And it caught up very, very quickly with people. So they're, uh, it's something they're keeping a sharp eye on. Marty uh, Barron also talked about just-in-time news in, in the idea that um, you're a consumer, you're driving past the dry cleaners, all of a sudden you get a ping that says, hey, by the way, you left some shirts at the dry cleaners, maybe you should just swing by and grab them right now. Again, the emphasis was on uh, mobile news is in its infancy. Things are going to change pretty radically um, for users. A lot more contextualized news you're going to hear from Alexis on Fold, which is one thing. Rap Genius is another thing, despite its name. It has some really cool ways of using context for stuff. Um, uh, Daniel Schultz, uh, who's here, is uh, also creating something called uh, Truth Goggles, which is another way of, of uh, contextualizing. Uh, personalized, uh, there's also going to be much more participatory and a lot more personalized news coming up. We held a hackathon here two weeks ago, and there was a lot of work in personalization. One of sort of the neat but very simple ideas was when someone does a story on, say, um, votes in the legislature, a line would be dropped in the story, depending on where your zip code was, telling you how your local rep voted. Simple but effective. Also, things are changing very, very quickly for newsrooms. This is, I think, a, a, a difficult thing for a lot of people to, to understand so far, and, and that is mobile is just a very, very different language, and things are changing very, very fast for mobile. And it is just a really different experience for people on, uh, whether fr from desktop to a mobile experience. Marty Barron talked a lot about this, how um, uh, y you can still do heavy-duty investigative journalism on mobile, but it's going to be done in a very, very different way. Bert Herman at Storify talked a lot about this, and everyone has seen this. The mobile designs, it's much simpler, much cleaner, big pictures, big headlines, fewer headlines. The Guardian recently went to this sort of design a couple weeks ago. Um, and it kind of brings me back, actually, to when I got into newspapers when modular design was becoming very popular. I know I'm dating myself here. But one of the, I guess it's a concern for me, is that 
that news organizations that are deep, like the Washington Post or the Guardian, they have tons of great stories, and it's difficult to surface these stories, I think, with this clean design. It's just something that, that has, people have to, be, to deal with as they move forward. Jonah Peretti talked about this a little bit. Um, I mean, it, I mean he's, it's being overstated a little bit, my headline here. Not, not that uh, commodity stories are in jeopardy, so to speak, but does it really make sense to have 30 different people covering the president's speech when all the 30 stories are going to be exactly the same? Uh, on the other hand, um, Jonah and Marty Barron, and I actually totally agree with these guys, that investigative reporting is not going away. There's been a lot of stories, I think, talking about sort of it may disappear because of loss in resources and stuff, but I, it's just not going to happen. Um, it just makes too much sense. Uh, readers love this stuff. Um, it, from a business point of view, it makes total sense because it helps you build your brand. And, um, and, and, and uh, reporters love doing it, too. I, it's just, it's just going to keep going. And winners and losers in newsroom. Losers would be reporters, say the solo reporters who used to go out there and uh, just take their notebook, come back to the newsroom, and uh, just uh, write, and they were done. That is kind of going by the wayside. You have to be much more of a team player these days, we work with news devs, uh, videographers, the whole bit. It's a, it's, it's, it's a team game now. Winners, um, and this comes from Dan Sinker, who is maybe floating around out here, and David Cohn at Circa. If you are a talented news dev, you are in luck because you have won the lottery. They are these news sites are desperate for people like you. And witness Aaron Pilhofer, probably a lot of you people know him, used to be at the New York Times, and he was just snatched up by The Guardian, and they are very, very happy to get him. And that's it. So anyone wants to talk about the, uh, the slides or the future of news or the Boston Red Sox, glad to chat with you later. Thank you very much. Thank you.